So our first speaker I'm actually super, super excited about. Um, so John Willis is joining us. John Willis has uh, been a leader in the DevOps community for as long as there has been a DevOps community, I think. Uh, he was there at Ghent. He was the only American at the first DevOps Days meeting. Um, and then was obviously the, you know, started the, the US-based DevOps Days as well. Uh, he's written, I think, almost as many books as he's been alive, years. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. Um, uh, the DevOps Handbook being one of the ones you'll probably recognize the most. And so it's going to be really, really awesome, I think, to hear from somebody who has been kind of one of the fathers, or maybe grandfathers now, I don't know, of the, uh, of the DevOps movement and, and kind of bringing some of that knowledge to us in the networking field, which, to be honest, we're a little bit behind. Uh, and so I think we have a lot to learn here. And I'm, I'm super excited to hear what John has to say. All right, so um, brief history of DevOps, DevSecOps, and DevOps for networking. Originally called the drunken history, but I don't know, change that. This is an important quote. I, you know, I'll tell you why I, mean, I was invited here in a minute. Um, but Andrew Clay Schaefer, mentor of mine, dear friend, one of the sort of the original DevOpsies, this quote he said a few years ago, and I think it applies to everything we do, whether it's network, it's security, it's governance and risk. You're either a learning organization or you're losing to someone who is. And let that sink in. I've spent a lot of time, so like, I'm, what am I now? I've got, um, you round down when you get my age, so let's say 40 years in this industry. Um, and I've seen all the different silos from mainframes, mainframe networking, to distributed computing, to all these things. And you'll see a little bit of my background. But no matter what you do, you need to be a learning organization. You can't just get stuck in something, I know this, and stay out of my way. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is do a little bit of an introduction. I'm going to talk about the DevOps journey, and I'll tell you why. I think I was invited here uh, for the journey. And then what were the lessons learned from the DevOps journey that maybe could propel the network work? You know, God forbid we call it DevOps for networking, but, but something like automation. And you know, the question, I think, Chris and Scott, why are we still stuck? It's going to be 2024, folks. Um, who I am, I'm going to go really quick. I've written like 12 books. I've done like 10 startups. Probably the most known for the DevOps Handbook, which was a collaboration. I sold a company to Dell. I sold a company to Docker, which was a networking solution from a non-networking person. Um, and my latest book is, is my crown jewel. Ten years I've been working on this. If you've ever heard of Dr. Deming, I spent a whole lot of time trying to understand how he fits in our world, and, and I mean IT, not just DevOps or applications or operations, network operations. It, it is, his, his theory is, he called his theory System of Profound Knowledge, and my book is called Profound Journey to Profound Knowledge. Um, so, and there's the book, in case you wanna buy it, so. Um, so I'm gonna bury the lead here. Jeremy Shulman is the reason I'm here. I'm pretty sure that's the reason, right? Um, and, um, I met him, you know, I, I'm one of these guys that I get sort of bored easily. So like I did the DevOps thing, all right, successful. And then I, I did, you know, we, did, we, we tried to tackle the QA and I figured network, I can win that one. And Jeremy's like, you're not gonna win, John. <laughs> They're different. I'm like, no, no, no. You, you, but people don't realize when I started talking about DevOps, sysadmins were much more meaner and growly and, than you network folks. I remember giving a presentation in Boston in probably 2009 at a Lisa Wednesday night thing. And I'm editing a little bit of literary license here, but I believe in my nightmare version of it, I was being chased with pitchforks and knives and sticks. In fact, I remember one point somebody, when I talked about Chef and automation, he's like, what if it starts just installing software on its own? I'm like, yeah, it's just not gonna do that, so. So the, so the bury the lead is, I'm going to walk you through this really cool graphic I've created. But like Jeremy was asking me, in fact, he, he forced me to rewrite my presentation a little bit this morning. Because last night he was asking me some profound questions about what he thought you wanted to hear. And maybe he was wrong. But, um, but the, and he asked me, like, what was the thing that got 
that you guys in DevOps got those ornery, like, sysadmins. You know, I used to call my, my uh, archetype Bob. You know, Bob had his own directories, and Bob, like, and, like, Bob knew everything. And to go to Bob, you had to go in and, like, remember the movie Oliver, you know, please, sir, can I have some more? Can I get a permission, right? It took, he asked me, like, what did we do? And I had, it took me a while to think about it, but it was relentless passion. If you hear something this week or these last two days, write a blog about it. We do that in DevOps. People who, and it's great for you because if you're new and you're, don't be shy. Say, hey, you know, this is what, I see this all the time at, at Gene Kim's DevOps, you know, Enterprise Summit. Some guy who's like a year, two years in the business uh, will go ahead and give it, write a blog, and, and we'll all blast it all over the place. So it's in your best interest. Um, influential evangelists. You, there's got to be people who are going to stand up, like Chris and like Scott, to just say, hey, we've got to change things. Um, diversity, inclusiveness, empathy. You got to get more women at your conferences, boys. You just have to. And we worked at that really hard. We really did. We knew. And it's not just because it's politically correct. It's diversity brings in so many other. I'll mention a book a year later. A friend of mine wrote, two women wrote about DevOps. It's the best book ever written. It's better than my DevOps handbook. Um, aha moments. We'll, and like, we'll see some of these in this path. Um, conferences. You've got to make sure that you make conferences accessible, open, easy to run. Um, taxonomies. You know, icons work. Like, if there's something that comes out of this, the first DevOps days in Ghent that Chris talked about, me and a, guy, a friend of mine, Damon Edwards, we had a podcast, and we usually would interview people, and we, at the end of it, we said, we just need to talk about what the hell happened at that thing. It was insane. And we came up with an accidental taxonomy called CAMS, Culture, Automation, Measurement, and Sharing. Um, adapt from other disciplines. You talked about the 1800s. So I'm going to talk a lot about lean. Lean will apply to network engineering. Trust me, it applied to security. It applies to, um, and then a canonical book. We talked, me and Scott talked about this, because Scott was like, who are you? What are you going to talk about? I don't know you. No, uh, he was not that mean. Uh, it's like, tell me what you would do to change our industry. And I said, you know, that was, I didn't have the time to think about it when Jeremy hit me last night, but like a book. The Phoenix Project was our canonical book. And the thing that was great about that book, and this is why I run out of time, but the, the thing that was great about that book is you could, in, when you talked about DevOps and operations and, and applications, development and operations, you could give that to a manager and they'd go, yep, I know that guy. I know that girl. I know that person. You need one of those books in network. I know people say, well, I tried to do that in network and give it to, but they need to be stories about people you know. There's a character called Brent. Everybody knows a Brent in the Phoenix Project. You need your Brent. Uh, so, all right, here's the really cool part of this. Um, so I did this a few years ago, and I thought it was cool. This is, um, the, don't get fooled that this is really cooler than it is. It's just a PDF that is like 80 billion bytes long. Um, so this is the journey. So just a couple of things here, and I'll try to point out the things that I think are really important for you, like how do we change, how do we get the ball rolling, why is, dev why is networking sort of the last bastion, really? I mean, we've got you know, automated governance going on, is, is on fire. We've got DevSecOps. You know, um, almost every other discipline is like gotten on the train, right? So a lot of this starts with configuration management. Um, you know, in fact, that's how I met Jeremy, as I was just getting started with, uh, with networking and some configuration. We, we were playing around with configuration with Arista. You know, Arista was really cool, especially for a non-network person. Oh, man, it's an operating system. This is cool. Like, I can run Python on it, right? And, um, you know, what's that other stuff, that Cisco stuff, where you have to learn a billion commands? This was really cool that I, everything I could do was literally in the operating system. So I run into Jeremy, and he's working for Juniper, and he's given a cool presentation on all these uh, chef cook. Oh, he's doing Puppet. Puppet Manifest, really the same thing. Of all these things to configure, you know, switches and configure just all sorts of really cool stuff. I'm like, oh, you know, I, when I see somebody, like if you give an amazing presentation this week, you're going to have me grabbing onto your leg while you're walking away because that's what I do. I love to learn from people who, like, inspire me. 
And so I, like, I, I wouldn't let go. You've got to tell me more. Where is this going? What is all this stuff, right? And, um, and so, so GitHub 2008. Um, Luke Cadiz with Puppet, he was probably one of our first evangelists. You know, talk about you got to find those people that are just hitting the pavement, getting out there and speaking, uh, constantly just fighting the fight. Um, the um, probably, you know, the other thing, remember I said aha moments. Our aha moment in DevOps was by a guy named John Ospar and Paul Ammon. And I was at this conference. It was an O'Reilly conference. And John Ospar gets up there and says, you know, we do 10 deploys to production at a day at Flickr. And now here, I'm going to do a little literary license. I was in the back room, and people were throwing up. You can't do that. It will destroy humankind, you know. Um, you know but you, I'm, you have those stories. You have, I, we can walk around the room, and we can't do it, but one-on-one, -on -one I'd say, what if you did this with, like, templates and ginger templates and use Python? You could never do that. These are never. You know, the thing that sort of I knew I was going to, and I lost. Jeremy was right. I lost. But let it, when somebody told me, John, the network is different than servers. I'm like, really? Do you ever hear about Knight Capital? Knight Capital is a company that basically some sysadmin made a, put a wrong comma in. The second highest high frequency trading company on, the, uh, on NASDAQ and, and uh, NYSE. And they were out of business in 20, they lost $440 million in 45 minutes. And they were out of business in 24 hours. So now I am not naive to not to know that like what the complexity of networks and switches and routers are. I do know those. I sold the company to Docker that, but that was a network company. But I'm just saying, don't fall into that trap. We can't do this because. It's bullshit. Um, so his 10 deploys a day. And this was a great icon, too, that we used for many years with Spock and, uh, and Scotty. You know, like the ops and dev, right? Like you had Spock was the guy who was a little bit weird and he kind of hung really close. And Scotty was the guy that was screaming and hollering, you can't do this, Captain. Right? That was ops and dev, right? It was a great icon to, like, just get people to think about. Um, you know, Velocity 2009, some of the videos. I got a um, slide that has all, most of the references here, so if you want to watch some of these. Um, we, I was at the first DevOps days at Ghent. I gave a presentation on Chef. I was the ninth person in it, Chef, so I helped really sort of drive. You know, again, I was one of those evangelists. My, my CEO, Jesse Robbins, basically gave me a credit card and said, go DevOps. Just get out there and DevOps. Not Chef, by the way. That was one of the things about the early uh, sponsors in, uh, in DevOps days is, the earliest sponsors like ThoughtWorks, Puppet, Chef, there's a few others I'm missing, they never talked about our products. We, they, it was a tax we were paying to grow this thing. Um, you know, and then we went to Ghent, and then I, me and my friend Damon Edwards ran the first DevOps days in Silicon Valley, and there was like, there was like 50, 40, 50 people, the one in Ghent was 300 people six or eight months later, like the, the fire had, and what, the other thing we did is we piggybacked at operations, which was Velocity's operations. So we didn't ask permission, we just tacked on two more days. So there's a lesson learned there. Um, and then after that, I said that me and Damon came up with this culture automation measurement and sharing, and I think that was a really strong, it was a, a loose taxonomy, it was never defined to be like, hey, we wrote cams, you know, we're cool. Right? It was just like accidental. You can even listen to podcasts. But years later, I was thinking more as I learned more about cybernetics and, and systems thinking. And this is another clue. Constant, remember Andrew's quote about you're either a learning organization? You've got to go outside your domain. You've got to look at other domains. Obviously, look at DevOps, but look at Lean. You talked about, you know, there's so much to learn from Lean. Uh, look at the uh, resilient stuff. And as I learned more about like cybernetics, complexity, complex systems, uh, complex adaptive systems, I realized really it was more of a cybernetic feedback loop. It wasn't just CAMS, it was this sort of cycle that comes, goes on. And this is one of the probably more important icons in, our, in the DevOps movement was we were able, and Andrew Clay Schaefer did this one too, so he uh, basically he depicted in those like little simple caricature what the core problem was in DevOps. 
the core problem was, the chronic core conflict, if you will, in DevOps was the way the world worked prior to DevOps was developers would throw their code over the wall. Operations are not good fielders because they drop it, but most of the time they catch it. And then they and they try to do something with it, and then like literally metaphorically, like, hey, you forgot to tell me this. You're an idiot. No, I'm not. Right? And, and like, you broke the system. No, no, you broke the system. And we called it the wall of confusion. And you know, the goal was to smash that wall of confusion. Why are we letting this arbitrary? Is there sort of that thing? that is a caricature, that just like everybody, once you show it, they, everybody knows it. Um, and then, you know, another area we learned a lot from, and this, I mean, like, this is like right in your wheelhouse in networking, is because, you know, if you go back to some of the earliest, I, you know, when I, when I, I I'll tell you a little bit about when I started um, my, at the company called Socket Plane, and we built a, a sort of an SDN interface for Docker, and, um, and the guy who was the primary author was Madhu Venkapali, who was the first committer on Open Daylight. And like, I was thrown in the middle of the lake, gentlemen, and women, ladies, and men. men. Uh, like, I was like, well, I, I gotta learn fast. So I took this like Coursera class on networking. And the, probably the biggest takeaway is how brilliant those people were. Like, they're like our founding fathers of like BGP and all the stuff. You know, there was a debate last night, and I, I'm terrible at names. I don't even remember my kid's name, but at the dinner, I'm sitting right next to the guy, and Jeremy's talking about how famous he is. Oh, yeah, he's the guy who wrote MPLS. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I just touched him. No. And then the argument was he didn't or he didn't, and that's where I got lost. But, um, but, but the, uh, the thing, right, is that, um, like, we learn from other interests, and complexity is there's so much there, and complexity, and understanding complexity. And like I said, I, I went a little tangent, though, but if I went back to all the things I was listening to, like, this geniusness that people, and like my friend Brent Salisbury says, you know, that's all to get us those cat pictures, man. Like, you know, and like, like the, oh, they only knew, right? Um, but learning from resilience engineers, I've got some links to Sidney Decker and Richard Cook. Uh, he's got a famous short paper. It's only about four pages long. It's, it's how complex systems fail. It's brilliant, right? And like, it will fit so well. And I got links to all this. You know, and then like, as we moved on, uh, so anyway, there's a, there's a whole gap between 2013 and 15, but that's when I, I, um, I, I met uh, a guy named Brent Salisbury. So I, wanna, I do this thing where I go to Vail every year um, to, um, to meet with investors, well, not really investors, but like people who do uh, money markets, quants, they do um, they do tech, um, large cap tech investments, right? But they're always concerned about the next technology that might come out of nowhere. So it's about 50 of us they bring in to let them know, like, hey, I call it the Splunk effect. They were all like freaked out that they never heard of Splunk before it went public, right? And uh, and so on the bus ride from from Denver to Rail. There's this young guy, and he's coding up a storm. Like, and we're in a van, and I'm like, all right, good for you, you know. And he's just coding, and I see he's got an ID up, he's got, you know, and he's just coding. And, he, and finally, after about an hour, he takes a break, you know. And I'm like, hey, what do you do? And he goes, well, I'm a network engineer. I'm like, bullshit, no way. Network engineers don't code in Java, and they don't use IDEs. And he, and he explains to me, he, he, here's the funny part for you all, He's, he says, he starts explaining SDN, he starts about this guy named God. He says, God, you know, it isn't Brent, he's kind of funny, but he's, and he meant uh, Martin Casado, right? Like, but, you know, like, and he, he laid me into the whole thing, and then in the last half an hour, I explained him what DevOps was, and it was a peanut butter chocolate moment, and we, we wound up starting a company together building uh, open v switch implement. So original Docker was basically block networking, right? And they really thought they were going to scale, like, uh, and they had no idea how to do multi-host and all. And my guy, Madhu Venkapali and, uh, and Brett were already working for Red Hat on the CTO team, making open daylight work with open v switch and all this stuff. So we just put it in open v switch. The sad part is we sold it to Docker, and the first thing Solomon did is made us can all that stuff and do a native VXLAN. Like, <clears throat> you know, so that was terrible. But that was my uh, sort of thing. Um, you know, I think um, this, uh, Dave Zwieback, I, I've got a link to this. I, I didn't have a chance to update this slide. But he calls it Beyond Blame. It's probably only sold 100 copies. 
It's a great book. And it's about uh, a financial institution in New York where um, the vendor tells them to make a network change, and he makes the change, and he gets fired. And then they have to bring this guy back. This must be a familiar. And then after you get fired, for the next month and a half, they keep bringing him back as a consultant to help explain what went wrong. You know, so it's beyond blame. It's a great book. It's uh, Dave Zwieback, and I got a link to it. Um, the, um, you know, and I think later in the game, we really learned a lot about, like, what we were doing wasn't new. Like, was, a lot of it was coming from lean um, you know, like what Toyota did. I'm a big, like if you read my Deming book, and by the way, my Deming book has a lot of these, not all of them, but a lot of these stories in there. Um, this was the book I was saying written by um, uh, Jennifer Davis and uh, Ryan, I don't forget her last name, but it's a great book. It's basically been a ton of stuff written about DevOps and then two really smart, uh, working at Google, wrote this book about DevOps. And it just, it's just a whole different perspective. And it's why diversity matters. Um, Empathy, and then we came out with the devil. So the, the, another thing I said, the canonical book, Gene Kim, you know, spent ten years trying to write this book, um, and it was called the Phoenix Project. And it's it's just, it is the book that is the sort of it's a fiction story, right? And it's a book. If you ever heard of Elliot Gorat and the Goal, it's a modern day rewrite of that. But um, but it really is a great story because you start seeing everybody you work with. In fact, a joke that happens is people go to Gene like, did you actually work in our company? How could you know that story, right? And, uh, you know, the other thing too, right, like include other areas, like, like, like we spent a lot of time in burnout. You know, there's a couple of people in our industry who committed suicide due to burnout in our industry. And we addressed it, right? Like, so it's like inclusivity, empathy, right? There's a lot of things that, that like, that you don't think about, well, I'm a network guy. Why would I care about? And I'm not, you know, it sounds like I'm making fun of you all, but like this is what I, where I was 20 years ago too. Um, another link I have is the Westrom model. It, it, it'll blow you away. I have a slide on it um, in the, so when I go back to the slide deck, um, it really sort of, this guy was a sociologist who looked at like um, social or hospital care. And he decided, he looked at organizations that he classified them as pathological bureaucratic and generative. And the real key was, you know, the, the pathological were blame focused, like, you know, the, the sort of classic Bob, like, don't you dare come ask me a stupid question. You know, like, oh my God, what if my question is stupid? What is Bob going to do? Like, no way, that's the way you want to behave. You want the stupid questions. Right? You want the younger people to come in and you don't want them to be scared to death to ask you, how is your organization going to grow? Um, so that was an important piece. We, it sounds like surveys, surveys, psychometric surveys are very important to let people know where we really stand. It's the truth serum, right? Um, Gene Kim started DevOps Enterprise Summit. This is probably... If Pete Cheslock would have basically got an NFT for this thing, he'd be a billionaire. No, not a billionaire. He'd be a multimillionaire. It was the, uh, the unicorns pooping unicorn poop and everybody else having to shovel it up, right? Um, there was uh, a great presentation early. The other problem we had with DevOps in early days, everybody was thinking, well, like the big five, the, the Accentures and Ernest Youngs and all be like, yeah, that's great for you kids. But enterprises can't do that, right? And then we ran a conference with Gene, and one of the first two speakers was um, Ross Clanton and Heather Mickman, which was a Devon Ops. So John Allspar and Paul Hammond were a Devon Ops for Flickr. This was a Devon Ops for Target. By the way, Target can do this. You can do it. Um, you know, um, there's another great presentation when you talk about like learning from Lean, Ben Rockwood's 2011 Lisa. Um, conference. Um, I did a whole Deming to DevOps, why this stuff matters. Um, I think there's two books, if you want to learn lean, that really apply to how Toyota was so incredibly successful. Like, let's be clear now. Toyota, from about 1980, late 70s, to almost the early 2000s, decimated. And I mean capital D decimated GM, Ford, Chrysler. Right? And, they, and those books will tell you why. The, the two on the right are probably more important. Toyota Kata by Mark Rotha and High Velocity Edge by Steven Spear. Um, 
Andrew Clay Schaefer, a few years later, gave um, a, a, probably, I think, the greatest presentation ever given in DevOps called um, the, There Is No Talent Shortage. Like, it, right in a time where everybody thought there was a talent shortage. And he was like, no, no, man, you, it's that learning. Like, your talent is in your organization. You don't have to go out to get that talent. You have to become an organization that lets people learn and inspire and use all these techniques. I was, this was um, kind of interesting. I'm on a plane flight, in a, and I got bumped up first class. I'm sitting next to this guy, suit and tie. And, you know, a lot of times, um, I've lost a little weight, by the way, so I'm looking good, better than I was. But I, I was, like, I've been obesely overweight, right? And, uh, and I always feel self-conscious. Like, the guy with the tie, me with jeans, and look pretty shaggy. Like, he's going to hate me immediately. So I sit down, and I'm working on my book, uh, the DevOps Handbook, right? And, uh, and he's like, are you an author? I'm like... Yes, I am. But so we get into like, what do you do? And he worked for Beth Comstack at GE, which if you know Beth Comstack, she was a CMO who literally changed everything at GE with Eric Reese's Lean Startup. And, and so we agreed to meet. He was in Atlanta. We agreed to meet for, um, for lunch. And I was going to explain to him more about DevOps. So I give him like 15 slides. He goes, dude, if you got to present to the CEO, you got less than three minutes. Five minutes tops. And I felt like, like I was a fraud. Like I couldn't explain. So I spent the next year trying to figure out how would I give a presentation? Like right now, if like the CEO of GE came in and said, I need you off the stage, even though I got four minutes, I probably could go. But, but uh, what would I say? And I spent, and I came up with this DevOps is a set of practices and patterns that turn human capital into a high performance organization. Right? Because you're part of the organization. You're the most, I won't say most, you are incredibly important in an organization. If you don't, think about systems thinking. Read Peter Senge's book. Um, you are part of a system, and if you're not like in that system, it, you're, that system of your organization is not gonna work. So it, it's your responsibility to get in front of the organization to say, we need to collaborate. We need to be part of this system. Um, we did DevSecOps, I'm gonna sort of wind down there. Um, the, I think um, probably, oh, Wardley Mapping, if you haven't heard about that, that's an amazing tool. Um, and this is sort of the end stuff. So let me just do the sort of the final wrap up then, go back to my uh, slide deck here, just to finish up. So this is my sort of DevOps as a set of practices in past. So you, your network automation is a set of practices and patterns that turn you and capital into high performance organization. Full stop. You got to see it that way. You're not just that network group. And then, so if I go back through, look at the things that we looked at in there. And again, I know it was kind of quick, but, but like there was this relentless passion. Like people here, you're here. You're in a, there's a reason you came to a network automation conference. Like, there was something about that title, unless somebody just gave you a free ticket and said, hey, I'll go. But chances are you're here because you, that sort of spark, that's what the original Ghent and the original sort of Silicon Valley when we went from 50 to 300. There were things that we were doing that were lighting fires in people. Continue to light the fire. This is hurting our industry. If we still have... You know, I, I was, I'm working with a vendor right now, and there are still people in that vendor think that ops is a stack, a rack and stack job. And I gotta go back, oh God, here we go back 10 years to try to explain. You know, networking is not a rack and switch and, and top a rack job. There's so much more for competitive advantage. Again, I know I'm probably preaching a lot to the choir. Become an evangelist. Um, you know, deal with the thirsty. Figure out what your aha moments. I'm looking forward to Jeremy's presentation. I think there's going to be some serious aha moments in there based on what I know him. He's an aha guy. And uh, um, the conferences. One of the things that worked really well for DevOps conferences is we made it really easy to write conferences. Yeah, so uh, uh, we made it such that we, it was a terrible, to this day, it's still a terrible website. But literally, and people ask, hey, John, I'm in you know, Indianapolis. Can I run a DevOps? I'm like, go to that page. There's one page how to do it. Fork the, the, the repo and just make your changes. Pick your date and your venue. The vendors will come, the sponsors, and just pop it up there. 
So making something like that so every city can just run, instead of having these big, and this is great, you need the big aggregate. DevOps Enterprise Summit, my genius. So this could become your big aggregate once a year or whatever. You have these big events that keep growing. But somebody's got to create it so anybody in local city can run one. And they are self-sustaining. Um, learn from other incidences. And, you know, I, I think what we talked about, like you probably need a, a, you know, a, a book like The Phoenix Project that's very, you, know, you have the stories. Like you, we can sit around in a room over here and come up with 30 great stories of people who do this and why did this guy do that and how come nobody fixed this. Um, anyway, um, this was the, uh, I'll give you the slides so you can have that. And uh, if you don't know Cotter's um, eight-step change model, it's pretty, pretty awesome. It's like how to create a sense of urgency. Um, it, it's, just, it's a very cool process for, like, because one of the things that Jeremy had asked me and Scott asked me as well is, like, how do we change the mindset of people don't want to get, don't want to change? Right? I gave you a whole lot of tidbits, but there's a part of, there is these people who, used to, this guy is a Harvard professor who's like one of the premier organizational design, organizational behavior um, writers and, and thinkers, so. Um, these are all the resources. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I inspired you, and I'll be around for the next two days. <laughs>